What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with a build that's a little bit different from the usual logic and craziness and that is this trebuchet here. Now it might look a little bit weird right now with this stuff going on here at the back but that's because it's on the lift and I really wanted to show you guys just why it's on the lift. Now what makes this build really special is the fact that it is a pure mechanical trebuchet in the sense that we don't use any thrusters, we don't use any glitches, we don't use any controllers to speed up, we don't use any motors, we don't use anything to fling the projectile except a sling and a gravity weight. So we've got this giant metal brick on the one side here, we've got a pivot point in the middle, those controllers are for actually bringing the trebuchet back down, and you'll see when we take this off the lift, it'll actually free spin all the way up there to the top and the gravity will eventually sort of equalize that weight. So you can see just a really, really cool straight mechanical system. Now, of course, we need to be able to load the trebuchet and that's why everything becomes awesome. So to load it, it's a little bit difficult. I don't know how I'm gonna upload this to the workshop because it's gonna be very difficult to explain to people, but we've got, first you press the blue switch. Now that activates those controllers there, which will swing the entire arm down. It's not exactly realistic. In the old days, they would use ropes, but this is a mod free build. I didn't wanna use any mods for this build. I know it's been a while since we've done a build without any mods at all. And I decided, you know what? Let's do a pure vanilla trebuchet just to prove to everyone that, uh, you know, we, we don't necessarily need mods to do some cool stuff in scrap mechanics. So. We pull the thing down with the blue switch and then we press this dark red switch in the back which you'll see will raise this bar up. Then we press the light red switch and that'll bring the bar over top and you'll see it'll lock the trebuchet in place. Now we want to leave that blue switch on for now but eventually we'll get rid of it. Now of course we need to actually sling this hook piece onto that little post there. If you guys know how real trebuchets work they work with a sling and they have two ropes basically. And on the one end, you have a rope that flings off the end of a peg, that peg there. And when it flings off the peg at the top of the arc, it releases the sling, which in turn will release the projectile. And that's kind of how they work. And I really wanted to duplicate that in scrap mechanics. So of course we've got these free floating bearing chain things going on and uh, it's pretty good stuff. So we get ourselves into this position and then we press this orange button and that deploys this weird piston thing. It's got this weird sort of shape to it but that shape is done on purpose to do exactly that. You see, catch that hook. Now we press the dark red, bring the whole arm back down to give us some slack back in the chain. Then we press the yellow and orange switches and that'll, you'll see, bring this up and sling it over. This was the first big objective because of course in scrap mechanic, you can't exactly weld stuff. So I didn't have a way to free swing that on. So I had to develop this entire system. Now, of course, you might want to actually get your hammer out. Sometimes you need it to sort of push stuff into place. And then we hit the green switch really simply and this will rotate the whole thing and it should drop that chain just like that onto the peg. Really, really awesome. Then we can press the orange switch again and press both of these and just leave that sort of out there for now. Now, we're not done because we want the trebuchet to be under tension. If we were to just launch it from this position, what would happen is this would go shooting off that peg and it wouldn't actually bring the sling with it. So we want to put it under tension. So what we do is we hit the blue switch which releases the lock and then at the same time, we release that so you can see it brings the arm up and it'll actually bring this peg down into the firing position. The blue switch not only releases those locks there, but it brings the peg into the straight position. You want it at a little bit of a straight position. So as this thing gets pulled up, this little sort of chain piece will eventually slide off that peg, hopefully at the very top of the arc, which will in turn release our projectile. Now, of course, we can add our projectile and now we're good to launch the projectile. So we've got Everything's set, we've got the lock off, we've got this extended out. You want to keep it in this raised position so the trebuchet is constantly under tension. If you lower it, rest that on the ground, most likely it's not going to fire correctly. And then of course when you press this light red switch, it'll deploy this piston out, release this, and the whole arm will go. So in three, two, one, and there we go. You can see, look at that. It actually releases the chain right off the end and it launches the projectile. Now, you'll probably notice that the projectiles don't really go that far. There's about a million ways in Scrap Mechanic to launch a projectile. There's the flipper glitch, there's, you know, thruster-based systems, there's catapults that also use pistons without the flipper glitch, and you could, of course, do the spud gun shooting momentum transfer stuff now with the new update, but this is the coolest mechanical build I think I've ever built. I mean, the differentials are cool, and they're obviously fantastic, but this trebuchet took a lot of work and a lot of effort. And the reason why is because I really wanted to mimic that pure mechanical trebuchet aspect. I mean, it's just so cool to me 
to be able to actually make something that's, you know, a real life system in Scrap Mechanic. Now, of course, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to load. So you can see here, it, it's not lined up. So we'll just hit this with a hammer and uh, still not lined up. So we can bring that over. Oh, perfect. I'll try and include some instructions on the workshop on how to load it, like the steps. The reason that all the switches are different and manual and not automatic is because sometimes you kind of have to flick certain switches back and forth. Scrap Mechanic Physics don't always do the exact same thing every time, but you know, sometimes they do. So here we go. We'll actually load our projectile here. Now we're going to leave it attached for now, but it'll just be a little bit easier. Then of course, bring this down to create some slack and uh, yellow and orange there. Bring this up and over. This is honestly the coolest thing. And then of course that green one, which just rotates and you'll notice too, the green actually lines up right perfectly you can see so it doesn't actually leave a gap so there's no way it could slip off it's always going to be there and that way if the rope gets stuck for example and it doesn't fall down you can just smack it like this with your hammer and it'll actually knock it down to the position of the arm so that's really good stuff then of course we want to do this bring it back out of the way and just drop that back down perfect no problem now we can put the whole thing under tension so blue and uh dark red and that'll bring it up. It's very important that you do the blue first because if you do the dark red first, you still have the blue locking the trebuchet arm down and sometimes it'll kind of snap and it'll sometimes just, you know, fling this off the chain anyways. But should be good to go there. Load it back up and now we hit that red button and up it goes. And you can see, look at that again, releasing the trajectory and uh, not exactly... not exactly very far, but a really, really cool build nonetheless and I'm really excited about it. So of course... I kind of got inspired to do this build after Scrapman and I did that sort of castle siege thing. And I thought, you know, we did a castle siege with mortars and with, you know, cannons basically. And neither of those are really medieval weapons. So I thought we've got to try making a pure mechanical trebuchet that uses nothing but gravity and uses a sling to launch the projectile. We don't have any controllers up there that, well, there's a controller on the peg, but the peg doesn't move in the middle of the process and it naturally slides off the end of the peg with the just the momentum of the entire trebuchet since the beginning of scrap mechanic i've always wanted to do this build but i've never really had the time patience understanding or pretty much know-how to actually do this properly and make it a pure mechanical trebuchet i originally created this with the intent of firing two by two explosives but i haven't actually shot a single two by two explosive yet now i do have this saved on the lift so we're going to try and do it with a two by two explosive. So there we go, we've got our explosive and we'll try and load this up. So let's bring this back down. Oh, we're not into position, hold on. Bring that over, perfect, bring this down. All right, and then bring it forward and up. And hopefully we can sling this whole chain up and have it launch an explosive uh, just as efficiently as it did the wood block. I have a feeling when it hits the top there, it's gonna just explode. Like the this part is gonna hit the explosive and just cause a real problem, but We'll see what happens. So let's just drop the chain off. I love this, by the way. This system to, to load this chain took forever to figure out. And I know it looks super simple, but just coming up with the design for this, it's very specific for a reason. It has to be able to lift this sort of thing out of the way, the platform out of the way, as well as load the sort of hook piece and catch it all and do it consistently. So it did take a lot of effort, but I think it's really, really cool. And uh, I really love this build. Now, of course... This is the most inefficient way to actually siege somebody in Scrap Mechanic, but uh, here we go. Our explosive is settled, our sling is in the right position, and everything is set, and here we go. Oh my god, it actually worked! Are you serious? We actually sieged... Okay, this is kind of deceiving. How far do we actually shoot? You know what, let's aim the other way, because obviously we're shooting into the canyon, it's a little bit difficult. To judge the positions. I'm sure I'm not the first person who have come up with this kind of a build. I'm sure there's a ton of other people who have done pure gravity trebuchets. I haven't really checked on the workshop to be honest. I probably should and uh, I would be very curious to see other people's pure gravity trebuchets and oh look at that. That was that was clean. We didn't even have to do anything there. It just naturally laced itself up. Sometimes that'll happen when it comes back down. You get lucky and the hook gets caught. Otherwise you have to use the loading system but if that happens we can actually just you know do this and put this here and hopefully have room. Look at that. Perfect. Now we'll do the uh, releasing of the blue. And just wait for this to drop down to position. This is of course with the same controller as the blue. So when you see this get into the firing position you're good to go. And like I said 
if you guys have a build like this that uses pure mechanics, so I don't want anything, nothing with controllers, nothing with, you know, I mean, obviously there's a controller here to line up the bar, but this bar doesn't move mid trebuchet sort of release. And that's the point. If you had like a cup that holds it and then let's go at the top of the arc, it's not really the same thing. It's a lot more difficult to calibrate this kind of a chain system. So if you do have something like that, let me know in the comments down below, post your link to the workshop and I'll check them out because I'm really curious to see how many pure mechanical weapons there are in Scrap Mechanic because I think it's just really, really awesome. And although the Scrap Mechanic physics aren't that consistent, you can make a semi-consistent weapon. So here we go, let's check the range on this. Obviously it's not gonna be very far, but uh, let's see here. Three, two, one, release. I mean, that's pretty good. You know, that's it's not bad. That's like maybe, you know, two trebuchet length. So obviously not that great. I did try playing around with more weight. I mean, we can we can do it now. We can add a bunch more weight. All right, so let's see what this does. Let's bring it back down. All right, hopefully that, that thing doesn't get caught. Sometimes the chains, they get kind of weirded out and they get glitched through each other. So you kind of have to respawn the whole thing. Oh, look at that. It actually got caught. And of course, now the lock's not powerful enough to push the whole thing down. Okay, not a problem. Let's just bring this up. Well, we need this. No, we need this at 7 to launch. All right, well, let's just use our lift to kind of help this out. I mean, it's not really configured for this. That locking bar there only has enough power, I guess, to bring it down to this position. But we'll just bring this across. Perfect. Let's bring that down. Not too fast. We don't want to wreck that. Okay, good. Perfect. And then we'll just push this into position. And then we'll release that. Excellent. It's definitely got more tension, I feel. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word. Maybe... I'll upload it with this extra weight on it if it works. I'll just calibrate the lock a little bit. But here we go. We'll release the lock. And we're good to go. And three, two, one. Oh, I didn't wait for the sling. I didn't... Oh, well, that, that definitely went further. I didn't wait for the sling to straighten out, though. I should have waited for the sling to straighten out. Let's, uh, let's do that again. Now, it might slide off the end there. I'm not sure, depending on how much this weight affects it. But we'll see if this gets us a further distance now that we actually let it go to the right, you know, firing bar position. So here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, that's definitely better. That makes such a difference. I mean, not much. So I'll definitely upload it with this extra piece here. I'll have to reconfigure the lock to actually make it work. All right, so 15. And uh, we'll have it go a little bit slower. Bring it in and then bring it back down. All right, excellent. Now let's see if we can actually load this. We're kind of pushing ourselves. The trebuchet is just too low to the ground. That's fine. So let's uh, up, back in. Now, see, it can't, it can't load it because of this now. See, this is the problem. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can fix that too. 13, is that the right, maybe the right height? Hopefully we can do that. Bring this back. Perfect. Perfect, that might be actually the right height. Okay, not really, but you know, it's, it is what, it, it's not exactly perfect. Um, well, there we go, that works. I guess you just back it up. You know, that'll work actually. Let's put this at 12, I think. One, one lower just to make sure, and then bring all this down and out of the way, and then we'll load up our particle. So I'll upload the trebuchet like this. I think definitely with the extra weight makes a huge difference in terms of launchability. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you have a trebuchet that uses pure mechanical systems, I'd love to see it. So of course, post those links in the comments down below as well. I'm, uh, I'm really excited by this build, but here we go. We'll hit that. Good to go. And three, two, one. Oh, I didn't wait for the lock to come undone. I'm an idiot. So here we go. We'll release the lock. Wait until this pin gets down into firing position. There we go. Perfect. And three, two, one. There we go. Look, oh, that one actually exploded. See that? It actually hit the projectile in midair. Check this out on the workshop. You know, download it, seed your friends in possibly the most inefficient way. I mean, if your friend can't notice the fact that you've got a trebuchet, you know, 10 feet from his base set up to try and siege one tiny little explosive at a time, then I think he probably deserves it. But I mean, this isn't one of those builds that was meant to be practical. It was just sort of meant to be cool and awesome and really trying to be realistic like we've got in real life. So of course, let me know what you think. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.